Hey, what's up everyone? It's Asad from 52 Cards here. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna teach you a really powerful technique that allows you to get one step ahead of your audience. Okay, so let me give you a quick demonstration to show you what I'm talking about, and then uh, I'll unpack it and, and teach it to you. Okay, so normally when uh, you're doing a card trick, the first step is to spread the cards out and have someone select a card, right? Here's another approach to doing it. Instead, you can just riffle your finger across the corner of the cards and then have someone just look at a card and remember it that way. Okay, so this is a completely free choice. It's not a force at all, um, but let me just go through an example for you. So I would just run through, let's say they said stop right there. So you look at that card, you remember it, memorize it, and uh, that's completely fair. Okay, at this point you can remind them that they could have looked at any card that they wanted. You can even hand the deck out to be shuffled, but by now it's already too late because I already know that the card that they saw was the King of Diamonds. And with that piece of information, there's a lot of really cool stuff I can do. So let's go behind the card table and I'll show you how this works and why it's such a great move. All right, before I get into the teaching portion of this video, I got a few quick announcements for you. Uh, first of all, I just wanna say a massive thank you to everybody who installed the 52 Cards app. This is something we released last week. It was months in development, a lot of really hard work went into this. And uh, the feedback, the reception that I've received from it thus far has been incredible, which is a good feeling. Um, if you haven't gotten it yet, it's completely free. It's on the App Store, it's on the Google Play Store. It's got hundreds of tutorials and a bunch of other resources that will help you learn if you're into learning the craft of card magic, okay? Um, next week, I'll probably do a full app review video and I've got another big update coming to the app which is gonna make it even better. So you can look forward to that. Second announcement is the winners for the Raspberry Mint deck giveaway from the last tutorial video will be announced in the description box down below. So you can check the description box to see if you're a winner. If so, congratulations. If not, maybe next time. Uh, by the way, these Raspberry Mint decks, they're almost sold out. The Black Mint sold out months ago and now the raspberries are almost gone as well. I'll drop a link down below and on the screen here if you're still interested in picking them up, uh, but they won't be around for very much longer. All right, let's get into the tutorial section for this video. Now, what I'll be teaching you today is a really powerful and useful peaking technique. And uh, there's quite a lot of peaking techniques out there. This is one of my favorites, it's just a really, really good one. So before I get into the actual technique, let me talk about some of the advantages that come with having a card selected in this fashion, as opposed to you know having someone reach in and grab a card. So first is, if you've been performing magic for a little while, I'm sure you've come across the type of person who's just kind of annoying about picking a card and then returning it to the right spot in the deck. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, can I return it here? Can I return it there? Can I shuffle the cards? I'm sure you've run into that type of person, right? So having a card selected in this fashion kind of uh, circumvents that. It doesn't give them any space to be a heckler and to be troublesome when it comes to the whole selection and returning process of a card, okay? The other advantage is that, you know, you, the way that you use your language can change. You can be like, I want you to just think of a card. So as I run through the cards like this, just say stop anywhere. They say stop, just think of that card. And that way, you know, after you've done the trick, when they're retelling the story of the trick, uh, they're gonna remember that they didn't pick a card, they just thought of a card. And that can be a, a powerful way to present an effect. All right, so um, let's get into the actual method for this riffling. It's super simple, actually. You're gonna hold the cards in your regular mechanics grip. And uh, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bevel the cards a little bit. I'm gonna let them fall to the right a little bit so you have the slant. And that makes it easy for me to run my first finger along the outer right corner of the cards. Okay, and I also kind of, you know, usually I push the deck forward just a little bit more than normal when doing this uh, riffling motion. So you turn the deck upright. My first finger is curled around the front edge and then the rest is pretty normal. I'm just gonna come across with my right first finger, sometimes with my middle finger as well, and I'm just gonna be pulling on those cards and then releasing them singly from my finger. Okay, so you explain to them the concept of just running through the deck. You show them, look, all the cards are in fact different. As I run through, just say stop anywhere you want. So let's say they say stop here. Now this really isn't a force. They can actually say stop wherever they want. So let's say they said stop right there. In this case, it is the ace of spades. But from here, you can't see that. And you emphasize the fact that you can't see the card that they stopped at. You can even turn your head the other way just to make sure that they know that. So they look at it. Once they've got it, you're gonna close up the riffle. And what looks like a very fair closure, there, there's no way that you can have control over their card in their eyes. 
Uh, I think I just lost the Ace of Spades, but oh, there it is. But really what's gonna happen is before I close the spread or the, the opening in the deck, my little pinky is gonna get a little pinky break right below that card. So when I'm opening the deck like this, I'm opening it just enough so that it creates a little separation right there. That's when I get my pinky break. It's very minute. And then once I have a little pinky break, now I can very fairly just close up. Uh, it's probably a different card now. I've lost the Ace of Spades, but I have a break right now in the middle of a supposed selected card. And another thing I'm doing is I'm clamping down with my left thumb. I'm kind of pushing up with my left finger a little bit. And that way, that break, even though it's uh, very open from the back or it's very secure from the back, there's absolutely no indication of it from the front. So after I close, I stop here for a moment because this is a very fair position. It looks like there's no way you could have control over the card that they saw. Okay, so you pause here, you talk, you say, look, you could have chosen any card, blah, blah, blah. You build up the effect, and now you're ready to get into the actual peaking technique. And this is this is brilliant. This is a, a, a very good technique. It, it works extremely well. So here's what you're going to do. In a moment of relaxation, it's actually easier to do in person than it is on camera. On the camera, I, and you can't really misdirect the camera. But in a moment of relaxation during some sort of offbeat in the actual performance, all you do is you relax your hand, and you're going to turn your pinky break into what's known as a step, okay? which is very simple to do. All I'm going to be doing is the top half, or all of the cards above my break, I'm simply going to be pushing to the left with my pinky. And I'm going to end in a position like this. See that little step right there? Okay, but before I do that, I'm going to orient my hand like this. I'm going to be turning it inwards and down like that. And that way, when I create the step, no one's going to see it because this is all they can see. Okay, and it's only like that for a brief moment. So you're going to be doing this in the context of a larger covering motion. Okay, so in the performance, in the demonstration, I did it in the context of doing a thumb fan, which is a good idea. I'll give you a few other covering motions later, but let's go roll with that one for now. So you create the step, and what that step does is it allows you to turn your hand inwards, and boom, I can see, oh, it is the Ace of Spades. I can see the card very clearly right there. Okay, so you would do this in the covering motion of a thumb fan. So offbeat, blah, 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 create the step. As I come across, I see the Ace of Spades right there. No one else can see it, only I can see it. And then right away, I come across and do a thumb fan and say, look, you could have thought of any one of these cards, right? Boom. That's it. You know the card, you have that powerful piece of information, and what you do with that now is completely up to you, depending on the context of the trick, you know, you can use it in one way or another. Or you could just do a simple prediction trick. Present it however you want, or you could just use that piece of information in the context of a much larger routine. But anyways, here's another covering motion for you that works quite well. You have the step, and uh, you're gonna be glimpsing the card in the context of an all-around square up. Okay, it's actually an, a reverse all-around square up. An all-around square up is normally this. So if your deck is messy a little bit, this is a motion that magicians use to kind of get their cards nice and tidy. You come here, boom, boom, rotate. We're going to be doing the reverse of that. So instead, you're going to be turning the cards counterclockwise. You turn your wrist inwards, you grab it like this, and then like this. So to do that while peeking the card, you have your pinky break, you do your step, and boom, you see the card nine of diamonds, and there you have it, you know the card. At this point, you let go of the break. You can hand it to them and have them shuffle the cards as much as they want. That's another good application for this trick is that if you're run into like the stubborn type who always insists on shuffling the cards, well, this is a good way for them to be able to do it. You let them look at the card, you peek it, you show them they could have picked any card, and you hand it to them. You let them shuffle. When they give you the deck back, then you can do some type of card control. You can very quickly spread through and cull their card maybe to the top, um, and then from there you can perform the trick as regularly or as you normally would. So there are some tips for you, and that that is the basic technique for the, the peak. I hope you like that a lot. I think it's an incredibly powerful and useful move, and I hope, uh, I hope it serves you well. Okay, so until next time, I will see you in the next video.